Part three here in chapter 12 is where we cover section 12.4, integrated rate laws. Um, we're going to look at integrated rate laws for first order reactions, second order reactions, and zero order reactions. So we'll cover what that means here in just a minute. And these are going to look daunting at first, particularly when we get to this next slide here. Right? But I promise you they're not that difficult as long as you know what tool to use and how to use the equation properly. So in the previous video, we figured out what a rate law was. What is an integrated rate law? Well, an integrated rate law relates rate to time because you'll notice those rate laws from section 12.3 didn't have time anywhere in the equation. They just had concentration and a rate constant. So by using an integrated rate law, we can determine the amount of reactant that's left or the amount of product that's been formed after a defined period of time. Or if we're trying to determine an amount of time that it would take for a reaction to proceed to a certain extent, we can do that too. Like let's say we wanted to say how much time until the reaction is 50% done. You use an integrated rate law to do that. And on slide 31 here, we see the derivation of an integrated rate law. And this is where the math requisites for the course come in, okay, understanding the derivation of where we get from rate is equal to change in concentration of reactant over change in time. Right, again, negative because it's a reactant. Taking the integrals and we get to the final integrated rate law down here at the bottom. You do not need to know the derivation of integrated rate laws, which is what's covered in the textbook and what's shown here, you do need to know the equation and how to use it. Okay. So this on slide 32 here is the information that you need. Okay. There are two ways okay, to write the integrated rate law for a first order reaction specifically. Okay. Because if it's second order or zero order, the integrated rate law is different. Okay. This is the most common one up top, okay. though it's just, you know, inversing this switches the negative over here for the second one. They're really the same equation. Okay. This is the most common way that you'll see it. Natural log of concentration at time t over the initial concentration is equal to negative kt, where k is the rate constant and t is time. Okay. So you do have to know how to use natural logs. And some of those tips and tricks, you don't have to know the derivation. Okay, so natural log of concentration at your defined time over A0, your initial concentration, is equal to negative K, the rate constant, times T, the time. Okay, so the concentration at time T is the time you're defining right here. And then we can do a mathematical manipulation as well. Concentration at time t is equal to initial concentration e to the negative kt. So you might see that one as well. But the one up top is what's most common. There are really three different representations of the same equation. Now, another way what we kind of just saw, except we're switching the order that they're listed in, is that that integrated rate law for a first order reaction does meet the linear equation format. Okay. Natural log of concentration of A is equal to negative KT plus natural log of the initial concentration, okay, which matches up with Y equals MX plus B. Y axis, concentration of A at time T, right? Y intercept, B, natural log of the initial concentration, the slope, negative K, and the X variable is time T. Okay. So graphical information gives us a lot of information about kinetics as well. So what do we do that with this? You should, by the time you're done with chapter 12, and really by the time you're done with this video, be able to look at a graph and tell me the order of the reaction. Okay? Because if it's a linear slope meeting this formula, okay, then you have a first order reaction. Okay? So you look at a graph, natural log of concentration versus time. If it's linear, then it's a first order reaction for this axis specifically. If it's not, like here, natural log of concentration versus time, that's not linear. 
So you know that the reaction is not first order. Yep. You don't know what it is. Could be second, third, zero. You just know by looking at this, it's natural log versus time and it's not linear. That is not first order. Okay. So what else can we do with this? Well, math, of course, right? Here's an example problem. If the rate constant for a first order reaction is 9.2 times 10 to the negative third inverse seconds, how long will it take for 80% of a sample to decompose? I recommend you pause the video, use the first order integrated rate law to try and solve this problem. I should get a final answer of 170 seconds. Okay, but I'll upload another video that will show you exactly how to solve that problem. Okay. But there's an example test problem for you, okay, using that first order integrated rate law to solve for one of the variables. How about second order reactions? And again, first order, second order, zero order, we're talking about overall reaction orders. Uh, and a second order reaction overall can be first order with respect to two different reactants or second order with respect to just one reactant. And that's the type we're gonna consider because if it's first order with respect to two different reactants, it is second order overall, but those are really complex integrated rate laws. Not something we're gonna cover at this level in chem 1560. Okay. So let's see what that second order integrated rate law. Again, we're not looks like we're not worried about the derivation. Okay, so don't stress out about that. But know what the second order integrated rate law looks like. Now there's no natural logs. It's one over concentration of a at time t. There's a missing subscript t here. Equals kt plus one over concentration of a at time zero, the initial concentration, which we see again meets the form of a line y equals m x plus b now we have a positive slope okay because it's a positive k right here so think about what we want the axes to be if we want this graph to be linear okay y is one over concentration x is still t time okay so if you meet those criteria we can determine that a reaction is second order. Okay. So here, natural log of concentration versus time, not linear, so I know it's not first order. Natural log is what we have for first order. Okay. One over concentration versus time, that's linear, so boom. I know that this reaction is second order with respect to C4H6. And again, we can do math with these. Here's an example test problem. Reaction second order with a rate constant of 5.76 times 10 to the second, negative second. Okay, so that gives me K. I'm given A0, the initial concentration, and I'm asked to solve for the concentration after 10 minutes. So that's my time. So you're solving for A sub T, the concentration at 10 minutes. And that's an example of a second order math problem. Again, recommend you pause the video try it out you should get an answer of 0 0.179 molar now one thing i'll put on your radar make sure your units match okay the units that were given in the rate constant were per minute and we're asked about a time after minutes if that's not the case those two don't match minutes and minutes make sure you convert your time so that it matches if i was given here liters per mole per second and i was given 10 minutes I'd have to convert that first okay, to be 600 seconds. Otherwise, your math's not going to work out. So give that one a shot using the second order integrated rate law at 0 0.179 molar. How about a zero order reaction to finish up the three types of integrated rate laws? Okay. Well, zero order okay, means that it's to the zero power, which is equal to one. So that just drops out. Rate is equal to K. So now these guys have the integrated rate law. Concentration is equal to negative KT plus A0, the initial concentration. Zero order means they have a constant reaction rate regardless of the reaction reactant concentration. Changing the concentration of the reactants does not change the rate. Not as common as first or second order reactions. So which one are you looking for there? Okay. Concentration versus time. 
if it's linear, it's zero order. If it's nonlinear, concentration versus time, you know it's not zero order. Could be first, could be second, we don't know. That, but concentration versus time. Linear means zero order. And all that information is summarized really nicely here on slide 44. Okay, I pulled this table out of your textbook, see table 12.2 in the textbook. Yeah. Zero, first, and second order reactions. Those are the ones you're responsible for knowing. Know the integrated rate law, know the graph conditions to be linear, okay? Because on the test, you will be asked to look at a graph and tell me if a reaction is zero, first, or second order. Okay? Two of them have negative slopes, one of them has a positive slope, and you can use that slope to find the rate constant. Okay, have some examples like that on your homework. Okay. So we finished the video with half-lifes. Okay. We began with integrated rate laws, but we can also consider a half-life, which maybe you've heard of. Okay. A half-life, which is represented by T with a subscript of one half, is the time required for half of the reactant to be consumed. Okay. So it's exactly 50% that's left from, from the beginning. Different reactions have different half-lives. Okay? So we need to know what those are. First order reaction has a certain type of half-life, second order, zero order, unique half-lives, unique equations. Okay? So you'll have to jot those down as well. This is probably one of the more equation heavy videos of the semester. Okay? If a reaction is first order, half-lives independent of concentration. Okay, So T half-life, or sorry, T half, half-life is equal to 0 0.693 over K. Okay. That 0 0.693 is not random, it's the natural log of two. Okay, so you might see that equation elsewhere as natural log of two divided by K, but if you plug in LN2 in your calculator, you get that number. Okay. So the half-life of a reaction that's first order is inversely proportional to the rate constant. Okay. As you increase the rate constant, the half-life gets smaller and vice versa. And here's a nice visual representation of a half-life, right? We start with one molar and then 50% gone, 50% gone, 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 right? So we see here that the half-life is six hours. Right? So an example test question, what's the rate constant for this decomposition reaction? Okay. In inverse seconds, we plug it in, T half equals 0 0.693. Not over six, because we want inverse seconds, right? So we need to convert six hours to seconds first. And then you should get a final answer here of 3.21 times 10 to the negative fifth inverse seconds as the half-life. Okay. How about second order? Yeah, those ones are just slightly more complex because we have the initial concentration in there as well. Okay, so T half is equal to one over the rate constant times the initial concentration. So we see that that second order half-life is inversely proportional to the concentration of the reactant. As we have a higher initial concentration, we have a smaller half-life. Okay? But then over time, okay, the concentration is decreasing, the half-life increases. Okay? And finally, zero order half-lifes, T half is equal to initial concentration over two times the rate constant. Again, summarized really nicely here in the bottom row of a new table. Okay, this is table 12.2 from your textbook. Uh, this information up here, we covered in the first part of the video, those integrated rate laws. Yep. And actually there's some information from the second video right there, including the units. Know that half-life as well. If you've memorized all this information from chapter 12, you're really gonna be well off for the test. Okay. So the next question that we have to answer is why do these rates differ at all? Why do we have first order, second order, zero order? Okay. And that comes down to collision theory, which we will cover in the next video, part four from chapter 12.